السلام عليكم ورحمة الله اللهم أكبر اللهم أكبر اللهم أكبر اللهم أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول Allah will correct your actions. 
whoever then obeys Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah bless and protect him, will have the true victory in this life and in the life to come. Two weeks ago, we talked about how much uncontrollable love that a believer has for Allah. We reflected and talked about the ayah, amanu that the most powerful, the most special, the most true love there is on the face of this planet is the love a believer has for Allah. And we went through example after example, reason after reason why our hearts uncontrollably pour out out of love, devotion, dedication to our Lord and Master Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that love inspires us to learn about Him, to get closer to Him, to be obedient to Him, to have a burning desire. I want to meet my Master. I want to see my Lord. I want to be in the company of Allah. And that's why the Prophet he says to fulfill that desire in our heart. Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa. That whoever wants to, whoever loves, whoever has a burning desire inside of them, I want to meet Allah. Allah is just as eager, Allah is just as willing and wanting to meet you as well. And so we learn about Him. And the Prophet he tells us, Allah has 99 names, names that are so beautiful, names that are so perfect, names that are infinitely unmanageable, unimaginable because they're so magnificent. And it's not even 99, whatever good, beautiful, amazing thing we can say about Allah, He is that to the most perfect extent. Whoever memorizes them will enter Jannah. And we hope we can get to the tier of memorization. But the reality is, Allah may hold us to a higher standard. Not just that we know them on our tongue, but we know. Yes, I know Allah is Rahman, Rahim, Kareem. But I understand that care He has. I understand the power and control He has. I understand His forgiveness, His absolute majesty, His perfection. We know who He is. Not just the names and titles that He has. And one of those 99 names, to contrast our discussion two weeks ago, is Allah. To us, He is also so loving and caring. We have an uncontrollable amount of love for Allah. And for the believers, Allah reciprocates that right back. Allah, He is, as He describes Himself, He is Al-Wadud. He is Al-Wadud. And wood in Arabic is a deep, profound love. A love that is not attached to material things. A love that is not attached to, you have a nice car, I like you. You have a lot of money, I like you. You're very beautiful, I like you. That's not the love we're talking about here. This is real love, rooted beyond the material. And it's deep, it's meaningful, it's profound. It goes beyond the physical. And, and not, not only that, that but it's, when, when we say the word wadu, that pattern of fa'ul, when we say it like that, that has two added meanings on top of it. We may know the name ghafoor as well. It's, it's, there's mubarakah, there's hyperbole in there. It's excessive, it's, it's extreme. It's not the normal amount of love. It is above and beyond to one, two, three tears. And so it's not just the loving when we say al wadu. He is extremely loving, overflowing with love. And Allah, he, this is how He describes Himself. That He is the extremely loving, the extremely forgiving. And He is the owner, the possessor of the magnificent, majestic throne. And then He quotes his prophet, our prophet Shuraib when he was telling his people, he's getting his people to come closer to Allah, my people believe, my people turn back, my people seek Allah's forgiveness, turn back to your master, say Allah, I am sorry, Allah is asking for your forgiveness, turn back to him, change your life. Why? My Lord, my Master, He is forever kind, forever caring, always. And He is extremely loving. He is extremely loving. And so Allah he expresses this love and manifests it to His creation, to His dedicated believers. Allah loves believers only. Allah loves people of Iman. 
Allah loves people who have accepted Him as their one true God. And Allah, He expresses this love, He shows it to us, He manifests it to us in so many different ways, in ways of blessing us, in ways of forgiving us, in ways of doing so many things that we can't even comprehend. He tells us, <laughs> that your master Allah He's put everything in your fingertips He's put everything in the palm of your hands in the skies and the earth you can do things, you can control it you can do things with materials and atoms all of these things are in your control He's just overflowed just dumped on you all of his blessings. Those that you can see and those that you can't even see. Blessings that we see we perceive when we lose them. What happened? Our loved ones, our money, our iman, our faith, our homes. And blessings we don't, we don't even know are there. That our heart's beating and we never told our heart to beat. That my lungs are breathing and I never told my lungs to breathe. Blessings that we see and blessings that we don't even see. So whether it's the food, the iman, that Allah allowed me to make dua, Allah allowed me to come to the masjid, Allah allowed me to earn money, Allah allowed me to spend that money on my family, to smile. All of these things is because His manifestation of His love upon us as believers. And being a believer, having iman is single-handedly the biggest blessing Allah can give anybody. The Prophet sallallahu tells us, in Allah yu'atid dunya, may yuhib wa man la yuhib. Allah gives the world, Allah gives money, Allah gives power, fame, rage, jobs, cars, houses, whatever you want, material, to whoever he wants. Allah can love them and he will give it to them. Allah can hate them and he will give it to them. Allah gave Sulaiman a kingdom that was unimaginable. Allah also gave Fir'aun a kingdom that was unimaginable. وَلَا يُعْطِ الْإِيمَانَ إِلَّا مَنْ يُحِبُ And he only gives Iman. He only gives faith to those whom he loves. The fact that we are sitting here, the fact that we say, لا إله إلا الله. There's no deity, nothing worthy of worship except the one true God. Allah is a manifestation of His love upon us. And He gives us things that we do not deserve. He tells us, Remember me, mention me. And I will remember and mention you. Who am I to be remembered by my Lord? Who am I that Allah mentions me? Who am I that Allah mentions me? Who am I that He takes the time to mention me? And he says, If you are grateful for what I've given you, I've given you even more. I didn't deserve the thing in the first place. And then I'm grateful, and then he gives me even more on top of that. And that's what the good, what about all the bad that I do, those things that I dig myself a hole into. Even then, even when I reject and disobey, he still turns to me with a loving tone. Go tell my servants, my slaves, my servants, those of you, you've wronged yourself, you've harmed yourself, you've sinned and committed wrong against your own self. Don't despair, don't lose hope in the rahmah of Allah, the kindness of Allah, the care of Allah, the softness and gentleness of Allah. He forgives everything. He forgives all sins, all mistakes. Don't stop coming to ask Him. No doubt, He is the extremely forgiving, the always caring and kind. And so whether I commit sins in the day or whether I commit sins in the night, the Prophet tells us that during the day, Allah he extends His doors of forgiveness. He puts out His hand to forgive all of those people that committed sins during the night. And, and if, if I, I commit, commit sins, sins during the daytime, he extends his hand, he extends his, oh, his doors of forgiveness at night to forgive everybody that sinned during the day. And this happens every single day until the sun rises from the west, until literally the day of judgment. And Allah, the Prophet, he tells us, 
ينزل ربنا تبارك وتعالى كل ليلة إلى السماء الدنيا حين يبقى ثلث الليل الآخر Every single night Allah He comes down in a way that's befitting to Him He comes down in the last day of the night He comes close to us فيقول He's saying Allah is proclaiming throughout the sky He's telling the people on earth من يدعوني فاستجيب Who is asking me Who is making دعاء to me Who is begging me so I can respond to you. When he is asking me, who is asking me? Oh, I need this, oh, I need that. So I can give it to you. When he is seeking my forgiveness, so I can forgive you. In every other relationship, we go to somebody and say, hey, do you have time? Can you spare something? I want to talk to you. Allah is there asking you, you want something? Come, I'm here, I'm ready. Go! Everything else, we have to wait for them. Allah is waiting on us. Because of His love, His care for us. His love, His care for us. And one of the most beautiful manifestations, one of the most amazing manifestations, is not necessarily in the story of those people who get the highest levels of Jannah. Those are amazing and unimaginable. But we get an idea of how much love Allah has for a believer, even a weak believer. Even a believer has a little tiny light inside of their heart. The Prophet ﷺ, he tells us, describing the last person to get into Jannah. This person, he's just kind of walking around, he takes one step one way, he falls on his face the other way, the fire just touches him just a little bit. And when he gets away from the fire, he says, Tabaraka al-Ladhi najjani mink. He looks back to the fire of hell. He says that one little burn from the fire of hell and he looks back to hell. He's talking to hell. How perfect, how amazing, how blessed is Allah who saved me from you. Allah has given me things He hasn't given to anybody in humanity. And then Allah shows this man a tree. فَتَرْفَعُ لَهُ الشَّجَرَ and so now the time he sees a tree, he's got out of the fire of hell, and he sees a tree. He says, Rabbi, adni mi min hadi his shatah. Allah, can, can I just come close to that tree? Astaghfirullah mi min hadi his shatah. Or astaghfirullah mi min hadi his shatah. Or astaghfirullah mi min hadi I just want to get some shade from that tree. Just drink some water from that tree, please. And so Allah responds, Ya ibn Adam, la'ali in a'ataytukaha sa'altani ghayraha. If I give this to you, if I bring you close to this tree, well, what are the chances you're not going to ask me for something else? He says, ah, ya no, 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 no. You give me this one thing, you bring me close to this tree, that's it. I'm not going to ask you for anything else. And he promised Allah, I promise I'm not going to ask you for anything else after this. I promise you, Allah. So Allah, He brings him close. And Allah, He is such as Allah knows how humans work. And so He brings him, he brings him close to this tree. He's benefiting from the shade of this tree. He's drinking from the water of this tree. And then another tree pops up. A tree that's just a little more beautiful, a little more nice. A little more water, a little more shade, whatever it is. He says, yeah, Rabbi. Can you bring me close to that new tree? Can you bring me close to that new tree so I can get some of its shade, so I can drink from some of its water? And Allah is like, you, you just promised me you're not going to ask me anything else? You just promised me. With the first tree, you just promised me you're not going to ask me for anything else. He says, no, no, Allah, no, I promise, I promise, I promise. You give me this, I'm not going to ask for anything else. You give me this, I promise you, oh Allah, I'm not going to ask you for anything else after this. So Allah, he accepts this. He knows what a human being can, can, can control. So he brings him close. He's not next to the second tree. He's benefiting from the shade. He's drinking from its water. And then now another tree comes up. A tree that's more beautiful, more amazing than the first two trees. So what do you think this guy's going to do? How do you think he's going to do? Allah, bring me close to that tree. Allah, bring me close to that tree. I just want, and he doesn't want anything more. It's still... I want to get benefit from its shade. I want to drink from its water. And I'm like, did you just promise me again that you're not going to ask me for anything else? I promise I'm not going to do it again. I promise you I'm not going to do it again. I promise you I'm not going to do it again. So Allah says, okay. Allah accepts His promise. 
And now he gets there, he gets close to that tree. And now that he's close to this tree, he's close to Jannah now. And so he hears the voices, the sounds of the people of Jannah. Right when you're outside of a room, you're not inside, but you can hear people are talking and chit-chatting. So he hears the voices of the people of Jannah. He hears them talking. Here's the people of Jannah talking. He says, Oh Allah, Allah, Allah please let me. Can I, can I go inside? Can I go inside to Jannah? And Allah in response, Ya Ibn Adam, what, what can I do to get you to stop asking? Would you stop asking me if I give you the entire world? And then another world on top of that? I give you the entire world and double that. So now this man is just like, Yeah, Rabbi, that's, that's the only meaning. the Rabbi al Allah, you're making fun of me? You mock me? You're making a joke out of me? You are the Allah of everything. You are the master. Are you making fun of me? And so the narrator of the Muslim of Allah, he starts to laugh. And he tells his students, Aren't you going to ask me why I laughed? He said, why did you laugh, Ibn Mas'ud? He said, I laughed because the Prophet laughed when he said this statement. And so we asked him, the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why did you laugh? He said, I laughed because Allah laughed. In a way that's befitting to Allah. Allah hears this, Allah, are you mocking me? Allah, are you making fun of me? It's like, Allah, you think I'm going to make fun of you? They want to make a mockery of you? You think I'm going to make fun of you? In Allah says, I'm not making fun of you. I'm not making a joke out of you. I'm able to do whatever I want. And another narration, Allah, He tells this man, Would you be happy if I gave you the treasures, the possessions of one of the greatest kings that ever lived on this planet? He says, Allah, I would be more than happy with that. So Allah, he says, لَكَ ذَلِكُ وَمِثْلُهُ 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 You get the kingdom of this world, times one, times two, times three, times four, times five, and the fifth time of the guy, some people will be for Allah and happy, Allah does more than enough. But Allah is not done. Allah tells him, هَذَا لَكَ You don't just get one dunya, you don't just get five dunya, I'll give you ten times this world. And you get whatever your heart desires. Whatever your eyes want, you will get it in there. And this man is just saying, Radhitu Rabb, Allah, I'm pleased. Allah, that's more than enough. This is how much, this is, one, this is the last person to get into Jannah. What more does Allah have in store for us? What more is there? And our question always is, if Allah is doing all of this to me, all of this for me, what can I do? When we learn about shukr, when we learn about gratitude, is that when we are blessed with something, the way to be grateful, the way to show our appreciation for that blessing is to use that blessing in a manner that, be, that makes Allah happy. And in the same regard, when we learn about Allah, when we learn about qualities about Allah, the beautiful, perfect, divine names of Allah, a way for us to attach ourselves, connect with, and, 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 and live by those names, is that if it's a name that is appropriate for us to act on, we follow that name. So Allah, He tells us, He is Al-Wadud. He is extremely loving. And that is a name we can live into our lives. We can manifest that type of deep-rooted love back to Allah and also to our loved ones and our family members. So when I think Allah gives me all of this, am I just going to take all of that love and be a jerk for the rest of my life? Allah has shown me so much love, care and kindness. And I'm going to be the opposite? We look at the sunnah, the life, the qualities and characteristics of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah manifested the most amount of love upon him that he did to any other human being. And in return, the Prophet ﷺ was the most kind and caring and loving human being. And so he tells us, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِ 
وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي First and foremost, Allah tells us about wood is that this is the, one of the two ingredients in a marriage. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Between a husband and a wife, the two ingredients is wood. Mawadda. This love and rahmah and kindness, softness and gentleness. And so if Allah has given us all of these things, the least we can do, oh my husband, oh my wife, let me be nicer to you. Let me be softer with you. Let me be a bit more gentle with you. Why is it that we will appease all of our co-workers and then when we come home, we are a miserable wreck? Why is it that we will spend and spend and spend on everything outside of our house? But when our spouse wants just a little bit, we become stingier than, than, than Qarun. What happens to us when we come home? What happens to us when we speak to our spouse? All day we're on the phone, all day we're chatting on WhatsApp, all day we're talking to people, the biggest laughs and biggest smiles on our faces. And we come to our spouse and it just becomes a dead flat frown. Allah says the recipe is mawadda wa rahma. Put love into that relationship. We want to feed everybody in the masjid of Ramadan. But we forget if I put a morsel of food into my wife's mouth, I get reward for that. We want to be the nicest. We want to be social justice warriors outside. First be a social justice warrior at home. And be good to your spouse. Be excellent to your spouse. Tell, be ready to tell the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, I try to be the best to my family. I tried to. Yeah, I messed up. But Ya Rasulullah, I tried. I held my tongue when I didn't need to be mean. I didn't walk away when I didn't need to start an I walked away when I didn't need to start an argument. That I put a smile on my face even though I was tired. Because we want to be the best to our families. We want to show the love that Allah gave to us. And bestowed upon us. To our families. That's to our wife and our husband. That's to our children and our parents and our siblings. Sometimes people, you ask them, how good is this person? They're great. And then you ask a family member. <laughs> yeah, right. Our family members should be the first ones to say, this person is a good person. Before anybody else. And the last thing we'll end on is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Sahaba asked him, Man ahabbu nas? Who are the, ilallah? Who are the most beloved people to Allah? Who are those people that Allah loves the most? And he tells them, Ahabbu nasi ilallah anfa'uhum lin nas. The people that are the most beloved to Allah are those people that are the most beneficial, the most helpful to other people. Some people like to take other people's money the most beneficial people, people whom Allah loves are those people who help and improve the lives of the people around them. They remove the hardships from other people's lives. Somebody's in debt, somebody's struggling, somebody got into a car accident, somebody's loved one is sick. All we need to do is have an open ear, listen, be kind, be soft. And if we have the money, maybe we can help pay off their debts. Help them pay rent, help them get through education. Or we remove their hunger, their starvation, we give them some food. And the Prophet he says, And that I just walk, that I'm beside somebody, a brother of mine, a sister of mine who's going through a hardship, who's going through a difficulty, I just give them some time, is more beloved to me than if I was to do i'tikaf in this masjid for an entire month. His masjid, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the second greatest masjid on the face of this earth in the universe. That he just takes a walk with somebody to listen to their problems, to help them in whatever way he can. Believers, Allah has expressed so much love and care to us as Muslims. It's one of his greatest signs of his love is that he gave us iman. Make use of that iman. Be people of iman. Know all of these things that he's given to us. And to reciprocate, to show that love back. Be the best per servant you can be, the best slave you can be, the best worshiper you can be. Learn about your master. Get closer to your master. Desire to meet your master. 
And do the same with creation. Be kind to them, be soft with them, be loving with them, be gentle with them. Particularly to your family and to everybody else. Help them with time, with your ear, with your money. And if the least you can do, the Prophet ﷺ says, if you have nothing to offer, the least you can do is don't harm other people. Prevent people from your own harm. Prevent people from your own harm. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِوَلَكُمْ وَرِسَائِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ فَإِنَ الْغُفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد الله and his angels they bless and protect the prophet so you believe ask Allah to bless and protect the prophet Allah we ask you to bless protect honor and compliment our beloved prophet our messenger our role model محمد رسول الله his family friends companions and everyone that follows the way until the end of time Allah make us from amongst them Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina a'thab al-nar wa dakhilna jannataka jannat al-firdaus al-a'la bi ghayri hisabin wa la a'thabin ma habibika wa rasulik Allah we ask you for the absolute best in this life the absolute best in the hereafter to protect us from the punishment of the fire and to enter us into your eternal beautiful gardens of paradise without any questioning without any judgment alongside your messenger Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana Allahumma baddil sayyatina kullaha hasanat Allah forgive us forgive our parents forgive our children forgive all of the believing men and women until the end of time Allahumma ansur al-muslimin wa alayka bil-zalimeen Allahumma ansur al-muslimin wa alayka bil-zalimeen Allahumma ansur al-muslimin wa alayka bil-zalimeen Allah help give your aid and victory to the believers around the world in this country or in any other part and Allah deal with their oppressors O Allah deal with their oppressors O Allah deal with their oppressors Subhanallah bihamdihi Subhanallah al-azim Subhanakul wa mihamdik Nashhadu an la ilaha illa at nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayh Bismillah اللهم أكبر الله